Oh, I just can't find it anywhere. Has anyone seen my phone? It must be here somewhere. Have you taken it? You moved it? Well, do things go missing in your house? I bet they do. You think you know where you put it, and when you come back, it's just not there, is it? And then sometimes we blame other people for moving it, and often unfairly, don't we? We've just forgotten where we put it. Well, today, we're going to think about the mystery of a missing body. Not a phone we're thinking about, or keys, or your favourite top. It's Jesus' body. It's gone missing. Jesus is alive. Last time I told you about how Jesus died on the cross. He did this because of his great love for us to pay for the sins of everyone who would trust in him. That happened on what we call Good Friday. After he had died, some friends took his body and buried it in a brand new to tomb. It was like a little cave cut out of the rock with a big heavy stone for a door. There they carefully wrapped Jesus' body in cloths and laid him down. Then they rolled a stone back over the entrance and went home. But the Jewish leaders were afraid that Jesus' disciples would steal the body and then claim that he had risen from the dead. So they arranged for soldiers to come and guard the tomb. Early on the Sunday morning, some of the women who followed Jesus went to the tomb to put some sweet spices on his body as they hadn't had time to do it before. They wondered how they were going to move the stone, because it was very heavy. But when they arrived, they had a shock. The stone had already been moved, and Jesus' body had gone. Where could he be? Whatever had happened? Had someone broken in and stole him, stolen his body? They were very perplexed. Then a young man in bright shining clothes suddenly appeared. They were frightened. But he was an angel and he said to them, Don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Don't you remember how he told you this would happen? Then he said, Come and see where he was laid. What had happened then? There had been an earthquake a little earlier, and the angel had come and rolled away the stone. His face was as bright as lightning, and his clothes glistened like snow. The soldiers fainted with fear, and when they recovered, they ran away. So when the women had had a closer look, the angel said, Now go and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. So off they went, on the one hand shaken, but on the other full of joy. This was unbelievable news. On the way to tell the disciples, Jesus himself met them and said, Rejoice! And they fell at his feet and worshipped him. Then he also told them to tell the others. But when they arrived, the disciples didn't believe them. Oh, come on, you must be dreaming. It can't be right. It's impossible. These poor women, no matter how much they insisted, the disciples just didn't take them seriously. But that evening, while they were still together, Jesus suddenly appeared in the midst of them and said, Peace to you. They could hardly believe their eyes. In fact, they were terrified. They thought he was a ghost. Then Jesus showed them his hands and feet. They could see the holes where they had nailed him to the cross. Touch me, he said, and you'll see I'm not a ghost. You can't touch a ghost. Then he asked for some food, and he ate it in front of them to prove that he really was risen from the dead. Now I want you to know that I had to die and then come back to life again, he told them. 
It was God's plan for saving people from their sins. I want you to go and tell everyone that you have seen me alive and to tell them that if they turn from their sins and trust in me, they will receive forgiveness of all their sins. Forty days later, they watched as Jesus went up through the sky and back to heaven, his mission accomplished. Well, the resurrection of Jesus is really good news. It means that he's alive today and has the power to forgive us of our sins and to save us from the punishment we deserve. And if our sins are forgiven, then we can be with him forever in heaven. This is what Jesus came for. This is what he came to achieve. And the fact that he has risen from the dead proves it. No one else has ever risen from the dead. It means we can really believe in him and trust him to save us. I hope you'll all believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and see your need of him to save you. May you come to him and ask him to forgive you of your sins and to make you one of his followers. Well, bye for now.